What's up? It's Susie from Hey Grill Hey, and we're doing a spooky Halloween special episode for you today. I am making my smoked feet loaf. If you need a Halloween meal that is creepy crawly but amazingly delicious, the smoked feet loaf is for you. It's even got carrot bones and disgusting onion toenails. I'm gonna show you how to do it. Let's get started. First step for our Halloween feet loaf is to prep our onions, our peppers, and our garlic. I start by heating a medium skillet over medium high heat, add about a tablespoon of olive oil. Once that's warm and shimmering in the pan, in goes my red bell pepper and my red onion. I dice both of these pretty small so that they kind of melt into and disappear into the feet loaf. After those have cooked for four to five minutes, stir in two cloves of garlic and let them cook for an additional two or three minutes. Pull those off, set them aside, time to make the rest of our meatloaf. All right, our peppers, onions, garlic is all cooked. It's time to make our meatloaf. This is gonna go directly into two pounds of ground beef. I like to use 80-20 for meatloaf. It gives me a good amount of fat and moisture without making it crumbly or fall apart. Half a cup of just regular breadcrumbs. Half a cup of your favorite barbecue sauce. I'm gonna be using my everything sauce. It's a good like classic basic barbecue sauce flavor. You can grab a bottle of this in my store or hopefully you can pick it up at like a local Ace Hardware or Mom and Pop Hardware shop near you or you can use your favorite barbecue sauce. Again, about a half a cup. Perfect. Three eggs. Two teaspoons of Worcestershire sauce. Two teaspoons of hot sauce. And then about two teaspoons each of salt and black pepper. gonna mix all of these ingredients with your hands until it is incorporated. You don't want to be too aggressive or over mixed because we don't want a tough meatloaf, but we do want everything evenly distributed. Now if you really want to gross your kids out for Halloween, make them do this part. Once your meatloaf is combined, it's time to form it into your feet loaf. Now I just start with a regular old meatloaf shape. And I make sure that I kind of leave enough to form my ankle and my toes. I can't say that I'm the most artistic person, but if I can pull off a feet loaf, anybody can. All right, kind of got an ovally. That's going to be our heel. Come down here and make some toes. Build up our ankle portion. This is the most like disgusting arts and crafts project. <laughs> I like the shape. I'm gonna add my toes. <laughs> it's perfect. All right. I'm happy with my foot. It looks a little bit Sasquatchy, but I think that's totally fine with what we're trying to do here. Next up, I gotta make my toenails. So I've got a white onion. I'm gonna cut uh, almost an inch, big piece, and then kind of cut it like this. That should give me enough toenail shapes to work with. And I just kind of wedge those little creepy toenails right into the end of each toe. It's so gross. I'll never not love this. <laughs> okay, once I got all my gross toes in, we gotta do the bones. You have to have exposed bones on your detached foot. It's very important. I like to use carrots. You can use a couple different sizes. I like to have kind of a thinner bone on one side. And then, yeah, for those of you out there with doctorate's degrees, this is the tibia and the fibula. <laughs> I'm certain that's correct. The shin bone. We got the two little ankle bones creepily protruding out of our feet loaf. Okay, it's ready, going on to the smoker. This takes about two hours to cook. Uh, 225 degrees. I'm gonna come back in 90 minutes, so an hour and a half. Set your timers. 
we are going to make a glaze and glaze the top of our feet loaf because it's not enough to have a smoky feet loaf. We need to have a bloody smoky feet loaf. It's time to make our beautiful, <laughs> not bloody feet loaf glaze. We're gonna start with a quarter cup of barbecue sauce. Again, I'm just using my everything sauce. Two tablespoons of honey, two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce, a teaspoon of hot sauce, and a teaspoon of mustard. Now the mustard isn't gonna do anything crazy in terms of flavor, but having that solid yellow base in there is gonna make it a really great color. Once the glaze is on, I usually let it go for another 30 minutes or so at 225 degrees. We're looking for a finished internal temperature on this meatloaf, anywhere between 160 and 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Carryover cooking will push us up to that 165 target temperature. Meatloaf is done. And by meatloaf, I mean disgusting looking feet loaf. This is amazing. I'm gonna let this rest for the next five to 10 minutes just to help it tighten up a little bit before I transfer to my cutting board and slice it for serving and a taste test situation. Yeah. <laughs> We've got the fog machine rolling. The meatloaf is cooled, the candles are lit. It is time for me to eat my feet loaf. I look forward to this every single year. It is a Halloween tradition at our house and it's so fun. Ugh. Also, that's just a freaking delicious meatloaf, okay? You get some of the sweetness from the glaze across the top. The meatloaf is tender, it melts in your mouth. It's not tough or chewy. All the aromatics onions, peppers, garlic, the Worcestershire sauce, and then the smoke around the outside. I mean, if you can get over the fact that you might be eating toenails and leg bones, you'll be just fine. I hope you guys have a spooky, safe, incredibly fun Halloween, and I hope a meatloaf shows up on your holiday table. We'll see you guys next time.